hey, how's this going? Good, fancy seeing you here. I'm Shiloh with D20 Academy, and today is the first part of our comprehensive guide to FFG's Star Wars role-playing game. So, if you didn't know, there's a really cool Star Wars role-playing game by Fantasy Flight Games that we're going to be diving into, and throughout this multi-part series, I will be teaching you everything you need to know. Part one, this part here, we're going to be talking about an overview of the system and then also kind of getting into the dice mechanics, how the dice work in the system. Hey, if you want to see this really exciting system in action, you can look out for our Star Wars actual play series, Friends Like These, dropping January 1st, 2021. It's going to be dropping here on YouTube or on our podcast, D20 Academy, which you can find on Spotify, Apple, anywhere. Actual play series, going to be a lot of fun, going to be really cool, and you can see this uh, system in action there. So go ahead and check that out. Okay, so let's talk about big picture stuff with this uh, Star Wars uh, role-playing game here. Um, so Fantasy Flight Games made this Star Wars role-playing game and then for some reason decided to split it into three different games. Um, which is a little weird, um, m mostly because it's the same game, same system, same everything. Um, just They just made three different ones, I guess, to be cool and to, let's be honest, get more money make make more money they're gonna get the anyway so this system do not be alarmed that there are three different games edge of the empire age of rebellion and force and destiny they are the same game just each focuses on a different aspect of star wars also all of them are set in the age of the empire so after episode four before episode five there are some extra books that you can get to change uh, the, the setting into like Clone Wars or whatever. But mostly these three games and all, their, all the stuff built around them are set during that era and each just focus on a different side. So Edge of the Empire focuses on the scum and villainy side of Star Wars, you know, smugglers and slavers and huts. Age of Rebellion focuses on the conflict between the Empire and the Rebellion. And then Force and Destiny focuses on the Jedi and the Sith and that whole conflict there. Now, Fantasy Flight Games just released, well, just like two years ago, recently released uh, an RPG system called Genesis. The Genesis system is a blanket system, meaning it can be used for any kind of setting, fantasy, sci-fi, weird war, modern, you name it. Um, that's what the Genesis system is for. And the Genesis system is based off of the mechanics of the Star Wars system. They're very similar. So if you like this system, it sounds really cool to you, but maybe you don't want to play in Star Wars, I would highly suggest checking out the Genesis system. Okay, so let's talk about the dice here. Um, so most dice are split into two categories, positive dice and negative dice. And then there are some other dice on the side, force dice, which are white D12s, and then a percentile dice, which is a D100, you know, two D10 falling together, that whole shebang. But those are for very specific situations. Let's forget about those for now. Let's talk about the core system, which is based around these positive and negative dice. Now, for each positive dice, there is a corresponding negative dice. So let's go through them now. Well, on the positive side, there are boost dice. These are blue D6s. And the corresponding negative dice are setback dice, which are black D6s. On the positive side, there are ability dice, which are green D8s. And those are the opposite of difficulty dice, which are purple D8s. There are yellow D12s called um, proficiency dice. Those are positive. And they are opposite red D12s called challenge dice, which are negative. Okay, real quick, before we get into the die roll, I need to explain something real quick. Let's talk about characteristics, skills, and difficulty. Now, I'll get into characteristics and skills more in the next part when we talk about character creation, but for now, you can know this. Characteristics are kind of like the core defining attributes that every single character has. So, you know how in Dungeons and Dragons, each character has strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, all that kind of stuff? Well, it's the same in Star Wars. They have these core defining attributes. Except in here, they're called characteristics, and they are agility, brawn, cunning, intellect, willpower, and presence. Skills, just like in D&D and most other art role-playing games, are specific areas of expertise that your character may excel in or maybe not be so good in. So in Star Wars, that's things like piloting, or brawling, or shooting laser guns, or hacking into computers, right? Those are skills. And each skill has a corresponding characteristics, just like D&D. So piloting uh, uses agility, um, slicing, right, hacking, the computer skill, that uses intellect, discipline, uses willpower, that kind of thing. Okay, now players will make skill checks when they're trying to accomplish a certain objective. 
So whatever activity they're trying to complete, that determines what skill they're using, right? If they're trying to spot something in the distance, they use the perception skill, right? If they're trying to hack into a computer, they use the computer skill, very obvious. And of course, each of these skills is attached to a characteristic. So when you're making a check, the dice you roll is determined by the skill and the corresponding characteristic. Okay, let's talk about difficulty. Difficulty determines the chances of success. So the harder the task, the higher the difficulty. The easier the task, the lower the difficulty. Okay, that makes sense. So every single check you're gonna make has a difficulty. And in Star Wars, they are simple, easy, medium, hard, daunting, and formidable. And we'll get into what those mean in a second here. All right, let's talk about the basics of a dice roll. So let's say I'm a character, I'm trying to make a check. Um, let's say for this example, I'm trying to make a piloting check. I'm piloting a spaceship and I'm trying to perform some sort of cool um, spaceship flip maneuver, right? Let's just say that, for example. Well, the first thing you do is, right, you determine what skill it uses. So in this case, it would be piloting. And of course, that is attached to a characteristic. You take an amount of ability dice equal to the characteristics. So piloting is attached to agility. So let's say my agility was three. I take three ability dice. Okay, then I upgrade an amount of those dice equal to my ranks in the skill. So let's say I have one rank in piloting. I upgrade one of these ability dice to a proficiency dice, which means I replace one of these ability dice with a proficiency dice. Because proficiency dice are better than ability dice. Now, in a couple rare cases, you may have more ranks in the skill than you have um, value in the characteristics. So let's say my piloting was four, but my agility was only two. In that case, you just take the higher number, whichever one is higher, ranks and skills or the score of that characteristic. That's how many ability dice you take. The lower number is how many of those you upgrade to proficiency dice. Okay, then you're gonna roll an amount of difficulty dice equal to the difficulty, right? So if it's simple, then you don't roll any difficulty dice. If it's easy, you roll one. If it's medium, you roll two, and so on and so forth. And the difficulty is determined by the check, by the GM, that kind of thing. Okay, finally, you're going to add boost or setback and or setback dice, depending on any kind of circumstantial advantages or disadvantages. So maybe I have the higher ground when I'm trying to make an attack. Maybe I'll add some, if the GM says, I'll add some boost dice for that. Um, maybe I am kind of blinded or something. I'll add some setback dice for that. Now, different abilities and features and things will add setback and boost dice. Um, but the GM and the players can also kind of figure out and add boost and setback dice as they would like, um, depending on the circumstances. Okay, real quick, let's talk about upgrading and downgrading dice. So, like I mentioned before, um, upgrade is making a dice into a better version of that dice. So ability dice upgraded into proficiency dice, and difficulty dice upgraded into challenge dice. Uh, downgrading is the opposite of that. So if I had to downgrade something, I would downgrade a proficiency dice to an ability dice and downgrade a challenge dice to a difficulty dice. Very simple. Keep in mind that boost dice and setback dice have no place here. Ability dice do not downgrade into boost dice and difficulty dice do not downgrade into setback dice. Those are totally different things, just forget about them. The only things that upgrade and downgrade dice are between ability and proficiency dice and then difficulty and challenge dice. Now, let's say I had, making that same piloting check, I had three, uh, three in agility and I had three ranks in piloting, which means I collect three ability dice and then upgrade, I would upgrade three, so all of them into proficiency dice. But then because of some feature or ability or some power, I upgrade the roll again. Well, there's no more dice to upgrade. So if you ever have to upgrade and you have no more dice to upgrade, you just add another ability dice. Then if I was to upgrade again, that would become a proficiency dice. That makes sense. And then let's say I had uh, to downgrade, but I had nothing to downgrade. Let's say I just had three ability dice. There's nothing to downgrade. Well, then you just start removing ability dice. Does that make sense? And of course, all this works the same for difficulty and challenge dice. Okay, cool. So you know how to make a roll. That's fine, CC. So you've, you've built your dice pool. You take these dice and you roll them together and you realize that none of these have numbers on them. <laughs> um, and that's because this system does not use regular dice like most other games. These are special, unique custom dice built for the game and all of them have symbols on them. So after you make the roll, you have to resolve the symbols. Let's talk about that now. So just like with the dice, um, there are positive symbols that have equally opposite negative symbols. So on the positive side, there are advantages that are opposite threats. Successes are opposite failures, and triumphs are opposite despairs. These all cancel out. So if at the end of my, I look at my roll, I have three successes and two failures. The two failures cancel out through my successes, I would have one success left. Let's say in addition to that, I also rolled one advantage and three threat. 
Well, that one advantage cancels out one of the threats and I'm left with two threats. Okay, cool. So you have what symbols are, are, are remaining after things cancel each other out. What do these symbols mean exactly? Well, to see if the check succeeds or not, you have to have at least one success. If you don't have any successes remaining, you have failed. Now, sometimes additional success symbols will um, provide even more stuff, but just know that if you have at least one success remaining after the roll, you succeed on the check. You do what you were trying to do. Okay, then let's look at advantages and threat. These do additional beneficial things with advantages or negative things with threat, regardless of if the check succeeded or failed. So you can fail a check and still end up with like three advantages and then spend those to add extra little beneficial things. And these are determined by tables in the book. You can spend them on different things during attacking and the GM can always resolve these as well as they wish. Um, so just keep that in mind. Now, triumphs act as a success and also a triumph and despairs act as a failure and also a despair. So if I rolled three successes and a triumph and then three failures, the three failures would cancel out the three successes and I would just be left with a triumph. But because triumphs also count as successes, the check would succeed. And I can also spend the triumph symbol to do really cool things. Um, in battle and things, like you spend triumph symbols to do really crazy things. Um, it's kind of like a critical hit in D&D. The same goes for despairs. So despairs also count as failures. And then the GM can spend despairs after the check um, to do really nasty things, kind of like rolling a natural one. Okay, so let's real quick talk about that force dice that I told you to set aside, that white D12. You'll notice that it has two different symbols on it, either a black pip or a white pip. The black pips represent dark side points and the white pips represent light side points. You are going to be using this if you're a force user. Um, and we'll talk about all of this in the episode all about the force in this series. So wait till then to learn more about that. Okay, so you know how to make a basic check, right? I'm trying to pilot a thing. I know how to do what, what dice to roll. I know how to resolve those dice. And then maybe I succeed or fail on doing what I was trying to do while piloting. And maybe even regardless of that, I get some beneficial things or maybe some negative consequences as well. However, those are not the only checks that you may be making. In some rare cases, um, the checks may be a little different. If you are making an opposed check, it means that you, uh, one character is actively opposing another character, resisting them. Um, so you would make an opposed check if you're trying to like sneak past another character or if you're trying to manipulate another character or grapple another character, right? Uh, in sneaking past them, it's your stealth against their perception. In trying to manipulate them, uh, maybe it's your negotiation versus their uh, willpower or discipline or whatever it is, right? Um, and then maybe if you're trying to wrestle them down, it's like strength versus strength. Um, so that is an opposed check when you're actively like um, conflicting uh, another character. In that case, you still count up your dice as normal, right? So um, if I was trying to sneak past a guard, I have a stealth rank of one and agility of three, I'd collect three ability dice, upgrade one of those to a proficiency dice. But the difficulty is determined by their perception. And perception is tied to cunning. Let's say this guard has two cunning and one perception. The difficulty would be one difficulty dice and one challenge dice, right? Two from the cunning, upgrade one to a challenge dice from the one ranking perception. That is actually the difficulty of the roll. Okay, in a competitive check, that's when two characters are trying to compete in something. Maybe who can reach the finish line first or who can last longer in a drinking contest, things like that. In that case, both characters make the check and then whoever has more successes at the end of it succeeds. If you are tied with amount of successes, then you go on at like advantages and triumphs and things like that to determine the victor. And if everything is tied up, if the rolls are exactly the same, you just reroll. The final special kind of check is an assisted check. So if a character is trying to help another character with something. In that case, the person making the role can choose the best skill and the best characteristic of both characters. So let's say I was trying to hack into a, a, some kind of system, right? That would require a computer's check. Maybe I have one ranking computer and four, uh, four intellect. And the person assisting me, my friend, has only three intellect, but three computers. Well, in that case, I can choose the higher skill and the higher characteristic. So I want to take their computers because they have three in computers and my intellect because I have four in intellect. And those are the things that I use for the role, meaning that I'm going to have a much better role than if I was just doing it myself. Now, someone can also help you. And if they are not skilled in anything that you're doing, you would just get an extra boost dice with that check. All right. The final basic thing to talk about is destiny. So in this game, there is a pool of destiny points that both players and the GM can spend to influence things for good or for ill. 
At the beginning of every session, you create the destiny pool by having every player roll a force dice. For each white pip, you generate one light side point, and for each black pip, you generate one dark side point. You count all those up, and you create the destiny pool for the session. So maybe at the end of tallying everything up, you end up with three light side points and two dark side points. Now, during that session, you can spend these points. Players can spend light side points, the GM can spend dark side points. Whenever you spend a point, it then flips over to the other side. So if a player is making a check and they wanted to spend a light side destiny points to help them in it, after they spend it, it becomes a dark side destiny point. This way, the balance between the light side and the dark side is constantly fluctuating and shifting as the players are spending points to help them, the GM is, GM is spending points to, um, you know, cause bad things to happen to them, and things are constantly shifting. So, what can you spend destiny points on? Well, first thing to keep in mind, you can only spend one destiny point per check. And of course, you can only spend the destiny point of your side. Um, and it only switches to the other side after the check is completed. So you both can't just spend the same destiny point canceling each other out going on for infinity, okay? Um, so what can you spend these on? Well, the first thing you can option you have when spending a destiny point is the helping hand option, which means that you can upgrade a roll. So, you know, just, just upgrade one of the dice in, in the roll, right? Very simple. And then the other one is raising the stakes option. That's where you downgrade the dice in a roll. Um, and then there's certain special abilities and talents and features that also spend destiny points. Um, so like a character, maybe depending on the career they choose, they can get a talent that allows them to spend a light side destiny points to deal extra damage in an attack or something like that. So there's all kinds of those as well that you can spend destiny points. The final thing you can spend destiny points on is for luck or deus ex machina or retconning. So let's say you land on a planet and turned out the atmosphere is not breathable for any of you. And then one of you can go, well, good thing we bought those masks that help us breathe in this atmosphere. And then you can spend destiny point to kind of retcon and, you know, and say that actually it turns out you did bring those, uh, even though maybe you didn't actually. Um, now, of course, these are just minor things, um, minor changes to reality and time that you're making. And the GM always has to approve on these. Um, but this is, you can just spend a destiny point to like have good luck. Like I run into the contact I was looking for by accident. Wow, that's really good luck. Um, once again, the GM has to approve all of these, and these are more like minor things that don't affect the plot or story too much. Okay, that is it for this part of this series. The next part, episode two, we will be talking about character creation and that whole process. So subscribe if you want to be alerted for when that episode comes out. Um, we're going to be going through every single thing in this system so you can learn all you can about it. So make sure you subscribe. Comment below if you have any questions or concerns or want to know more about this system. And of course, guys, look out for D20 Academy's actual play series, Friends Like These, dropping January 1st, 2021. We're going to be playing in this system, actually using one of the, uh, the published modules. Um, that one's going to be a lot of fun. Follow us on Instagram at D20 underscore Academy. And you can comment on this video or our Instagram or anything to get into our Discord. We have a whole community of people who love storytelling and tabletop RPGs and D&D. And we talk about and have uh, so much fun. Uh, we just do all kinds of stuff, crazy stuff over there. So go ahead and, and check us out if you want to get into that community. And if you are a game master or dungeon master looking to build your own campaign, heck, maybe it's in the Star using the Star Wars system, Go over to d20academy.com. I have a video for you there that will take you through how to build your own homebrew campaign. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.